So welcome back to the industry stage. And uh, today, as the theme is uh, financial services, we, this, this track is, uh, is about connecting finance. So we're going to hear from speakers from across the, the financial landscape um, about how we can connect finance with, with customers and, uh, and, and improve that, that whole um, uh, ability to meet the, the, our customers' financial needs. So to start off that, we're going to hear from Bijon Mehta. He's the, uh, the Global Head of Financial Services at, at Twilio. Uh, welcome, Bijon. Thank you very much, John. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, hope your sessions are going well, and, and I believe this is day two um, for all yep. of you. So um, hope the conference overall is going really well. Um, you know, as John said, my name is Bijan Mehta, and uh, I am actually joining all of you from New York. Uh, so it's my Monday evening. So good day to all of you. Um, like to extend my thank you to the API Days team. Uh, for organizing uh, the session today. Um, I'm gonna speak fairly briefly, uh, about 20 minutes or so, and really talk about the topic of building the next generation financial services through an API first approach. And really, you know, if you think about it, the, the question that I often get asked is why now? Um, why the critical shift um, you know, towards this next generation of financial services? Because in many ways, we've been talking about digital transformation for 10, sometimes 15 years uh, in some cases. And, and so I really feel based on you know, my experience as well as the interactions that I've been having in the industry, it really comes down to three key things in terms of why now? Uh, first and foremost, um, and, and I would not expect any of these three themes to be um, uh, earth shattering to anyone here, but first and foremost, in my mind, it's around evolving customer expectations. And, you know, I think we all know that the level of experience we have in our personal lives with technology and with technology providers has raised the bar on how we want to consume products and services in our professional lives. And so things like timeliness, proactiveness, personalization, um, convenience are all now a core element of the institutionalization of our new financial landscape. And those organizations that are not able to keep up in a almost B2C level of expectations around how they provide their services are gonna slowly start to uh, come under pressure. So that's number one. Number two, um, we all know our industry on a global basis is going through major disruption. You know, first and foremost, um, ever since the financial crisis of 08, 09, um, the industry, has had very fragile economics. And, and so that's just always underpinning everything. You add to that, you know, the challenges around increasing complexity of regu you know, regulation and the regulatory environment. Um, and then layer in two more key factors in my mind. Number one, sort of new players entering financial services. And those could be by way of, you know, fintechs, uh, insure techs, um, wealth tech companies, uh, a variety of new sort of non-financial services players that are embedding financial services in their applications, right? So the, the classic example we all experience uh, in our personal lives is any ride sharing uh, company effectively has very seamlessly embedded payments within their uh, service. Um, and then, you know, um, I would say the fourth level of disruption is really around new potential business models, right? That organizations need to be mindful of because they may form a core part of their business in the next five to 10 years. 
And here I'm specifically talking about uh, capabilities like banking as a service, how institutions are thinking about productizing their products and services to extend to other third parties. So industry disruption has never been more prevalent uh, and it's coming from a variety of, of different angles. Um, and then the last point that I would, I would highlight is technology replatforming. And so I think it's safe to say if you are a traditional incumbent player within the financial services landscape, whether it's banking or payments or insurance, you're probably operating on 30 to 40 year old technology. And that technology is perhaps uh, on-prem. Um, some of that may not have the ability to create a lot of those unique um, and you know, last mile experiences that um, customers are expecting and that management teams want to increasingly offer to customers. So we're seeing uh, a, a need to create a more modular API-based technology infrastructure. And so when you look at all of these, these, um, these three key themes, you know, one of the underlying uh, you know, forces at play in terms of addressing all of this is the apifying of businesses' uh, ability to offer new products and services. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I've got some examples I wanted to share, um, you know, and then we'll sort of, you know, discuss, you know, how we see um, the, 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 the key trends and then what we as a company here at Twilio are doing uh, to, to work with customers uh, and, and help them in their, in their transformation uh, journey. So um, let me start off the, the first of my three examples and forgive me, these three examples I chose because um, I, I know each of these um, organizations very well. Um, they are however, US and European centric. Uh, but I wanted to provide examples that at least I can speak to from personal experience. Um, first example here is N26, a European challenger bank. Uh, now they are a full service bank um, and they came on the scene. They now have uh, 5 million, uh, sorry, 7 million customers. And one of their key differentiators when they started out was to create a much more seamless and easy to onboard experience. Um, if I was having this conversation three or four years ago, uh, I would say to you, it took um, uh, N26 eight minutes to open up a bank account. They have now uh, condensed that to five minutes. Um, and so again, a lot of what N26 is leveraging are a variety of APIs that provide both that unique user experience as well as uh, user interface. The other key institution I want to highlight is Chime Bank, which is a US-based challenger bank. And Chime has 12 million customers. And again, very similar in business model to N26, they heavily rely on the ability to provide timely, personalized, proactive, um, uh, features that really have spoken well uh, in the marketplace and has allowed them to amass uh, the sheer customer base that they have. Um, their customer base from a digital perspective dwarfs most major incumbent institutions, whether it's in the US or even globally. So they're clearly uh, doing something really well. But it's not just the challenger banks that are leveraging APIs to create these experiences. Um, I'm sure many of you have, have heard of Bank of America. Um, you know, it's a, it's a traditional longstanding um, major bank in the US. Uh, they have 39 million digital customers. And they were one of the first banks to offer um, what we refer to in the marketplace as a digital assistant. Um, the digital assistant goes by the name of Erica. And Erica, you know, operates largely off the mobile uh, app. And so it performs a variety of traditional and not so traditional services. Again, 
all offered via a set of microservices. And you know, to me, when I think about these three examples, you're seeing not just uniqueness in terms of size of organization, but you're also seeing just in terms of scale uh, of how they've uh, been able to create these unique sort of, in my view, next generation uh, services. And again, all leveraging uh, APIs. Um, so when I think about, you know, the future of financial services and I, um, you know, I can you know, if I was to characterize what makes for a very successful organization as they're pivoting and developing for the next, you know, three to five years to not just support their existing customer base, but also their future customer base as we all want to grow. I would say, especially given, you know, the impact of COVID in the last one year, two key pillars. Um, that we see in successful uh, digital businesses. First and foremost, they are focused on customer engagement and they're also focused on customer service. So how they have that initial interaction with the customer and how they um, service that customer through the life cycle and journey across any of the processes that that client might engage the customer in. And those are things like, you know, real-time alerts and notifications, right? Again, timely, proactive, hopefully personalized. Integrating text messaging, voice, video, maybe even, um, you know, leveraging uh, natural language processing and AI-based capabilities that surface up, um, you know, next best action. Um, integrating chatbots um, and, and, and voice assistants. Um, better leveraging of digital marketing, again, to offer more personalized uh, services uh, to those customers. Even offering a full-blown digital contact center, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but that is a, another area that COVID has highlighted as an Achilles heel for many financial services organizations, both um, new challenger ones, as well as uh, traditional incumbent players. And we're seeing a lot of modernization happening there. And then of course, all of this being underpinned by you know, better security, authentication, and risk management uh, capabilities. Ultimately, all of these services uh, can be uh, developed and offered via APIs and embedded in organizations' um, existing platforms. Again, whether they be um, you know, a digitally native FinTech or Challenger Bank or traditional incumbent player. So if I was to kind of summarize the, the, the trends, you know, first and foremost, as we look at 2021 coming out of you know, um, a totally unexpected 2020 with COVID, first and foremost is we're seeing a redefining of customer engagement. And, and what we mean by that is organizations have traditionally relied on face-to-face -face communications. Um, obviously mobile has been a, 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 a you know, core digital platform of the last 10 years. But what we're noticing in the last 12 months, 18 months, is more and more organizations are looking to provide services through the mobile channel that they didn't before, both products and services, as well as extending um, those channels to include video, chat bots, um, and a variety of integrated means so that you can start a conversation via chat bot, maybe then call a contact center and know that that previous conversation is known to that contact center agent. So it's one integrated omni-channel experience. The second big trend that we're seeing is this acceleration of digital transformation, that, that journey that many organizations have been on for 10 or 15 years. Clearly, COVID has accelerated that. And specifically, what we're seeing are more and more organizations trying to look at their offerings or their processes and find ways to fully digitize them. 
And I think we as consumers of financial services products are seeing that in light of things like the mortgage experience and how that is increasingly now almost 100% digital in some cases, right? Even traditional bank account openings have now gone fully digital. And so we're gonna see more and more, not just at the B2C level, but also at the SMB, SME level, like in commercial banking. Um, and we're seeing even more elements of corporate and investment banking uh, going digital. Obviously insurance is another key industry uh, that is also accelerating their digital transformation. Um, and uh, that's another area where, again, APIs are forming a core part of that. The third sort of area, and we touched upon this a little bit earlier, and that is replatforming legacy technology. And, and quite honestly, you know, most of the, the infrastructure, the legacy infrastructure um, needs to be overhauled so that you can create a much more agile development layer that allows developers in banks, in insurance companies, in large payments companies to create the type of embedded experiences that we are now increasingly uh, you know, getting used to seeing. And a lot of traditional firms are going to be leveraging banking as a service or insurance as a service type capabilities. And they're gonna do it through the apifying of their, of their um, technology stack. So these are the three key sort of themes that I would share. Um, and we're seeing this globally um, across our, our whole customer base. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to turn a little bit now to kind of what we at Twilio do and, and, and how we do it and how it fits in with, um, you know, sort of the point of view that I'm sharing with all of you and the trends um, that I've just highlighted here. So, you know, who is Twilio? Um, we like to believe that we are the world's leading customer engagement platform to build differentiated experiences. Um, and we do that across any channel. And that could be, again, uh, video, email, voice, phone. Um, we help organizations via our APIs to develop their capabilities and bring them to market faster. We also enable a more personalized experience because our APIs can be integrated into your specific environment. So from the outside world, from your customer's perspective, they don't see Twilio. They see that all of a sudden you now are offering a variety of new digital experiences. We do it with a high level of security and compliance capabilities, uh, which is obviously critical in financial services. And most importantly, we do it at a global scale. And all of these five capabilities, these core capabilities are offered via our API platform uh, through a rich set of SDKs that um, developers uh, find very easy to use and easy to implement. Um, if I was to step back for a moment, you know, we as a company were formed 14 years ago and our founders were developers um, and our CEO, who was one of our founders, um, you know, really wanted to focus on solving a very complex problem. And that problem was how to take communications and create APIs that allow you to embed those communications in a desktop or in a mobile application. And so over the last 14 years as a company, we have grown uh, you know, uh, quite dramatically. We now have over 220,000 enterprise customers globally. Uh, we're running at a $2 billion revenue run rate. We operate in 16 countries around the world, 26 offices. Uh, we went public four years ago. And one of the statistics that we really love to share is that we have over 10 million developers that are actively using our APIs. And you know, to us, it's a great sounding board, 
it's also a great point of validation when you as developers can create a tool that other developers use and love. We also offer our services in over 120 uh, countries. Um, and of course, I've, I've shared a few stats here uh, in terms of kind of how we operate at scale from both the sheer number of annual messages. These are text messages that we uh, send on behalf of customers, as well as phone calls that we facilitate on behalf of customers. So I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of that background uh, with all of you. And so when we think about 2021 coming out of COVID and, and hopefully all of us will, will at some point be able to meet in person uh, this year, we did a survey uh, at the uh, latter half of 2020 and we reached out to over 2,500 um, decision makers. And you know there was a near unanimous verdict on what COVID has done uh, for the digital transformation agenda. And on average, what we found is that it has accelerated the development of projects by six years, which is, again, another proof point as to why we firmly believe here at Twilio that we are entering the next generation of financial services because of the sheer level of focus that's happening uh, from a um, digital acceleration point of view. Now I want to share some customers that we can at least publicly reference. And what I've done is I've shared, I bifurcated the, the slides into the digitally native companies on the left and some of our more notable um, traditional financial services clients on the right. And you know, as you can see, there's some really interesting companies on the left. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar. You know, we're working with companies like Stripe and TransferWise, and we're helping them across their authentication and their security uh, capabilities um, in terms of you know not just their platform, but in the case of Wise, which was formerly known as TransferWise, their mobile application. We're working with the largest challenger bank in the world, which is NewBank, and they have over 30 million customers. And we are providing an, an omni-channel contact center for all of their agents to be able to communicate with those clients over whatever channel those clients want to communicate uh, with NewBank over. It could be you know, phone, it could be text message, it could be chatbot. But all of those communications are centralized and um, uh, managed uh, in, in, in a unified way. We're working with Chime that I mentioned earlier, and we're providing them an IVR solution that helps them lessen the amount of inbound traffic that comes to their contact center. And I can go on, but I think you get the idea that you know these are companies that in many cases we started working with when they were much younger, uh, much smaller footprint, and we've kind of worked with them as, as they've scaled. Um, on, in terms of some of the more traditional organizations, you know, we're doing a lot of work on you know, SMS and you know, over-the-top communications like um, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, um, with you know, uh, Morgan Stanley and their wealth management business. Uh, we're also working with IMG, yeah. on a global basis um, as it relates to how we can help them uh, you know, integrate our APIs to provide an omni-channel uh, contact center and customer agent experience. Hey John, um, th these, are great, these are great examples. And I guess um, many uh, people in the audience would recognize these. You mentioned Stripe and Wise and, and yep. Revolut that all operate here. Uh, Allianz also. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess we have we have time for just a really quick question, and, sure. and my question is: um, how, how do um, how do companies get ready to consume uh, services from outside their own organisation? Because uh, many times, uh, with uh, with traditional uh, financial institutions, everything's been uh, in in house on premises, and uh, they haven't necessarily. Um, 
they, they may be using APIs internally, but the right. actual process of, of gathering um, uh, services from out, outside the organization in order to consume them is, yeah. um, uh, it has all sorts of security and privacy and, and sure. other uh, third party risk uh, implications that, that need to be addressed. Um, yeah. you, you have a, a process for, for working through those, those sorts of issues? We do, we do. So, you know, John, that's a, that's a great question. And if you look at a lot of the, the, the brands on the right hand side, um, as you could imagine, you know, they, they have the most stringent of security architecture reviews and processes. And so what we often find most helpful is, you know, we, we isolate an initial uh, proof of concept with many of these clients and that forms the initial engagement. Um, and it typically is in a very sort of customer facing business, like the retail banking side, as an example, or the wealth management side. And we will um, uh, initially start with a small subset of customers. And then you know, as we prove out the, the customer experience is in line with expectations or hopefully exceeds those expectations, we then look to, to grow the relationship. And it's that typical land and expand motion that we find with a lot of the um, incumbent players. The players on the okay. left, their developers so, just find our APIs and start using them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks very much for sharing that, uh, Bijan. Uh, I, I think we all developed a much better picture for um, how how organisations can um, increase the the number of uh, ways that they can communicate with customers, engage with customers, uh, without uh, without having to uh, build uh, so so many things themselves. It often is a matter of um, mixing. But some of, some of the drivers for for mixing um, uh, methods and channels for for engaging uh, customers. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you very much, and uh, have a lovely day to all of you for the balance of um, the presentations ahead.